Hello my friends and welcome to Eorzea. We have been taken capture by the Amalja as a sacrifice to their primal god Ifrit. Luckily they let us keep our weapons for some reason so <laughs> let's see what we can do with that. This is episode 11 of our Viera Lancer Sword and Even Wins playthrough and I'm so glad to have you here today. Now remember if you enjoy these coolly immersive playthroughs make sure to click that like button. But for now let's enjoy some Final Fantasy. As he entered the bowl of embers with a party of other players, we're going to have to queue this uh, for a little bit. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll see you when we get in there. Now, I am going to keep this in the episode because this is very important for the rest of our story. So, I'll see you on the battlefield. Right, we have our queue. Let's dive in and find out. Light party. What does that mean? Lord of the Inferno, hearken to our plea. Hearken, hearken to our plea. Lord of the Inferno, deliver us from our misery. O mighty Ifrit, Lord of the Inferno, your humble servants beseech you. Grace us with your divine presence. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh mighty Ifrit, we bring before you ignorant savages who, not, who know not your godhood. If it pleases you, Lord, scorch their heathen souls with your cleansing flame and mark them as your own. Bloody hells. Bring those two as well. What's going on? This ain't what we agreed. None but servants of Lord Ifrit may behold the right of summoning. The souls of unbelievers are forfeit. No, spare me, I beg you. I love how he shuffled. Beautiful children of man, by my breath I claim you. Arise once more as my loyal minions. Feed my flames with your faith, and all who stand against us shall burn. Oh, mighty Ifrit, my one true god. Your words are my bread. Oh boy. Well, that didn't really work, did it? Impossible. By what sorcery do you resist my master's will? Could it be? Your soul already belongs to another. Yes, that's the only explanation. <laughs> okay, big boy. Forsooth, thy frail mortal frame can serve as vessel to the blessing of but one, yet I smell not a taint of another upon thee. The truth of thine allegiance waxeth clear, thou art of the godless blessed number. The paragons warned of thine abhorrent kind, thine existence is not to be suffered. Then this is our arena, I suppose. All right, let's do this. All right, so I'm going to assume avoid the fire. I'm also going to stand closer to the other DPS to make it a little bit easier on our healer. You know, I may be new to... Uh, ooh, that looks dangerous. Did he just fart? Oh, oh. Now, I may be new to uh, <laughs> maybe new to Final Fantasy, but I'm not really new to MMORPGs or you know dungeons and stuff. Do I have a little bit of a sense of what I can do? The boss summons an ad. Kill the ad. Try to kill the ad. 
we go. Ooh. What do we do? What do we do? Stick the healer. You the healer? Oh, that's a healer. Nope. What kind of that? what to do with those crystals, but uh, they seem rather important. Pray forgive my lateness. Oh, hi, Thancred. I was delayed by a congregation of Amalja zealots. I swear each seemed more evangelical than the last. Assistant Lord. Snap! Yeah. I see the Bloodsworn wasting no time extracting the captives. No less than I'd expect from the Flame General's hand-picked men. Yeah, well, one among those wasn't really... Yeah, him. As for those two, it is fair to say their hardships have only just begun. They have much to answer for. I feel I owe you an apology, Soren. Had I known this mission would prove so dangerous, I would have never left you to face it alone. You've been given a veritable baptism of fire. Oh, you know, we made it. But let us continue this conversation in more agreeable surrounds. Uh, Camp Dry Bones, shall we say? This way, sir. Right, yes. Good idea. Let's head back to Camp Dry Bone. So that was the mighty Ifrit. And what a dis disappointment he was. The readings are nowhere near what I had anticipated, even taking all down interf interference into account. You should know better than to rely upon five-year-old data left by the Vilf. Vilf Legion? <laughs> Vilf. Nor can we expect any form of support from the Motherland, given the troubles at court. We have only ourselves to rely upon. Ever the pessimist, my dear Livia. Promise me, you'll never change. We've wasted enough time here. That meter of yours is too old to give any reading worth a damn. Nor that there was aught worth a damn for it to read. But I take your point. I suppose we must contend ourselves with the knowledge that we've achieved our primary objective. Yet I find that I'm troubled by that adventurer's unexpected show of strength. Could such a foe prove a hindrance to our plans? Perhaps, but that is a consideration for another time. You've been given a task. That is your priority. I suggest you treat it as such. Fail to do as my lord commands. And I will spare him the trouble of punishing you. That was, that was a pretty badass line. With allies like that. Beware a moment in love. <laughs> I shall need to be on my best behavior.
Okay, done and done. I suppose we're heading out. And heading to Camp Tribal. Oh, okay, well that, that that's nice. We don't have to walk back. Alright, thank Crit. What's the update? Ah, there you are, Soren. Come, rest a while. You'll have no better opportunity. Now, with, after witnessing the gods' ignominious defeat, the Amalja will be less inclined to risk our wrath. Now, for a time, at least. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. I was in the process of apologizing. I do hope you can forgive me. I arrived too late to be of any use to you or the abducti ab abductees. They may be whole of body, but the same cannot be said with their minds. But once a man is tempered... Ah, but it ill suits me to dwell on the negatives. Amidst all our misfortunes, there is still reason to rejoice. Ifrit is slain, and by your hand, no less. That is the deed of no ordinary individual, Sorin. Not that I ever thought you were ordinary. On the contrary, I have long suspected that you have the potential to shape the fate of this realm. What can I say? My fine eye for talent remains undimmed. Minfilia will be proud beyond all reckoning when she hears of your deeds. I trust you shan't object to my bearing the tidings to her. That way I can claim to have contributed to contributed something to this mission. You, meanwhile, have earned yourself a rest. Take time, take some time to relax. And return to the waking sands when you're good and ready. We can discuss matters in more detail then. Just don't take too long, will you? The realm's problems won't solve, solve themselves. Right. Well, um, back to the science of the seventh dawn we go. These things are really useful. There's us some guild. All right. That. That is a mount. That is pretty cool. All right, let's have a look. The Waking Sands. I really wonder why they put two loading screens into this. Oh well. Ah, the triumphant hero returns. Vancris told us the news upon his arrival. He is presently in the solar, giving a full report to Lady Minfilia. You should join them at once. Lady Minfilia is most eager to see you. All right. Head in. My late arrival nearly cost Surin his life. I wasn't there when the Amalja took him prisoner. And I wasn't there when they served him to Ifrit. Yes, by some miracle he survived. But that does not excuse the fact that he should never have had to face such dangers alone. I failed him utterly. Just as I'm failing you all. What's done is done, Tancred. You can ill blame yourself for every... I hope you weren't talking about me just now. Uh, Soren, it's so good to see you again. Impeccable timing, my friend. I just finished regaling Minfilia with your, you with, with your heroic exploits. I have no idea why I had so much trouble with that. Tancred has told me everything. You have done well to return to us. The perils you faced were undeniably great, yet a part of me believes that I had no cause to fear. And now we can put paid... Now we can put paid to our long investigation. What does that mean? As we suspected, the Amalja undertook both the robbery and the abductions with the aim of summoning their primal, Ifrit. Nor is this tale limited to Ulda. Similar incidents have been rife in both Limsa Laminza and Gridania of late. I dare say you've been curious as to how these crimes are linked to the primals. Permit me to explain. Having manifested in the physical realm, primals must consume aether if they are to maintain their presence here. And the stronger they become, the more aether they require. Now aether exists throughout creation. It flows, it flows through all life and permeates the very air that we breathe. Alas, this alone will not suffice to sustain the likes of Ifrit. Nay, he and his kind require a more concentrated source of aether, crystals. It's for this reason that incidents involving crystals can often be traced back to a primal. 
which leaves us with the why of the abductions. To understand this, you must first understand how primals are born. When all is well with the world, primals possess no physical form. Their essence is dispersed across the great river of Aether. However, when the world is plunged into chaos, those who worship the primals cry out to their gods for deliverance from suffering. These cries serve as a beacon towards which a primal essence is irresistibly drawn. It is this coming together, or etheric coalescence, which grants the being's physical form. Once born, a primal gains strength from its followers' worship. The more numerous and fervent they are, the more powerful their god becomes. But the primals are seldom satisfied with such reverence as their adherents freely give, and in order to gain more power, they do not scruple to create followers. They do this by tempering mortals, a process to which you yourself were subjected. Yet, even as Ifrit took your comrades in Estral, you alone remained unaffected. This is thanks to the power you possess, the Echo. We know not the why of it, but those blessed with the Echo are immune to primal influence. It is as though a greater power protects us. When first you came to us, I told you that the Echo would be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. I trust you now begin to see why. The recent incidents all share a common trait, meticulous planning. Such elaborate designs are a new development, and one which fills me with an unshakable sense of foreboding. While I share your concern, my presiding feeling is one of relief at your safe return. Ah, the, the immortal flames assured me that they will deal with the aftermath, though you will not need concern yourself with that. We may rest easy for a time. I suggest you take full advantage of the respite, Soren. You may be sure it won't last long. Once the people learn the identity of the hero who fell different, I fear you will have a nary a moment to yourself. Whether she intended to or not, Menphilia neglected to tell you something. Something I think it would be best you heard from one of us. It concerns the temp tempered abductees that were rescued. I am sorry to report that all are to be put to death. The flames with whom you were imprisoned included. Needless to say, this information must not be made known to the public. I swear to you that we would not do this if there were any other recourse. For once a man is tempered, he is tempered for life. His very existence lends strength to the primal whom he cannot choose but worship. And so we scions continue our fight, that no more innocents need be sacrificed. I hope that you will continue to stand with us, Soren. But I should be going. I must offer my apologies to the Flame General for the losses of his people suffered. Till next time. Huh. They are all to be executed, huh? Gods forgive me. How many more lives? Luiswa would never have allowed this to happen. I have to do better. I have to be stronger. I can see why he would blame himself, but that is not what we need be doing. And we leveled up with that as well. Very good. That brings us to level 34. This has taken me a while, I think, this level. But we got it. Alright, Midphilia, next up. Until not so very long ago, you were but one of the many adventurers seeking to make their way in Eorzea. But for your character and courage, you were raised to the esteemed post of Envoy. Thereafter, you traveled the realm, aiding those in need without thought of reward, confirming to Ida and Papalimo that the science would benefit from your aid. And no sooner had you joined us, than you personally bested the primal Ifrit. You have achieved a great deal in a short time, and won fame in doing so, Alas, fame does not come without a price, as you will soon discover. What... what are you talking about, exactly? We have guests, Soren. Or rather, you have guests. A beg pardons! <laughs> okay. 
Ah, Lady Minfilia, radiant as always. I'm given to understand that the signs of the Seventh Dawn have but recently welcomed a new hero into their midst. I'm here on behalf of the Maelstrom, the Grand Company of Limza Liminza, to offer said hero a place of honor within our ranks. <sighs> as you can see, Soren, your recent exploits have garnered you the attentions of the Grand Companies of Eorzea. Each organization would have Ifrid's Bane for its own. To this end, all three have sent officers to court you. Oh. Oh, okay. If they would not ordinarily go to such lengths to enlist a new recruit, and that they have is evidence of their high regard for you. I find myself wondering how word of Sodden's deed spread so quickly. That the immortal flames should know of this triumph is to be expected. But what of the other grand companies? Ah! <laughs> oh, adorable. Your, your reputation precedes you, Master Evenwind. It is no ordinary man who can face a primal and emerge a victor. And imagine our pride when we learn that you began your journey as an adventurer in our own Gridania. Know that the people hold you in high esteem, and that you will always be welcome among us. The Order of the Twin Adder has need of valiant men such as you. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us ensure that peace ever reigns over the Twelve's Wood. What a pleasure it is to finally meet you, Master Evenwind. My comrades speak of you in the most glowing terms. A man of your talent belongs with the Immortal Flames. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us secure a prosperous future for Uldar. The Admiral was not exaggerating when she said you have the look of a hero. Full often does she speak of you, friend. It is only natural that we should want you for the Maelstrom. Join your strength to ours, and together let us see the Grand Vessel of Limza Liminza to the shores of glory. Oh, but who do I choose? Lady Minfilia. <sighs> Very well. Though I'm quite sure you need no reminding, may have a brief summary of the situation to help to clarify your thoughts on this matter. As you know, the Grand Companies are all encompassing organizations empowered to call upon the martial, economic and technological resources of their respective city-states in times of strife. There are presently three such organizations in Eorzea. The Maelstrom of Limza Liminza, the Order of the Twin Adder of Gridania, and the Immortal Flames of Uldar. Serving a Grand Company means serving the nation to which it belongs. You will be charged with its defense and tasked with advancing its cause. In return for your faithful service, you will be furnished with various rewards, some of which may well prove useful to you in your other endeavors. If you are agonizing over which of the Grand Companies best deserves your loyalty, be at ease. The commitment you make this day need not be permanent. Should you wish to shift your allegiance at a later date, you are entitled to do so. And yet, I can see that it is no small choice you face. Ah, a thought occurs to me. You will, of course, recall that the three city-states are planning to hold remembrance services. Well, as part of the proceedings, I am given to understand that the leader of each grand company will deliver an address. Hearing these addresses ought to help you make an informed decision. What say you, my dear officers? A fine suggestion. You are as wise as you are beautiful, my lady. Very well. Let Soren hear our leader speak, then return here with his decision. We eagerly await your answer. <laughs> Poor Tataru. I know full well that adventurers are by their nature a liberty-loving breed, and not best suited to the discipline of military service, but I strongly urge you to join a grand company nonetheless. While the promise of reward is enticing in itself, it is not the only benefit. You are possessed of great power, Soren, and with it you are capable of doing untold good. Yet know that great power is one to attract attention, not all of it friendly. There will be those who wish you ill, and you must needs be on the lookout for them. Yet. However vigilant you are, you are but one man. In the midst of a grand company, however, you will be one man amongst many, a friend amongst friends. Your achievements will be shared, and so will the danger. I can think of no better arrangement. Of course, 
Joining one organization need, need not mean leaving another. I hope that we can continue to rely upon your aid. The Twelve know that we will have need of it in the days ahead. The Grand Company seek to protect their own nations. We Scions, on the other hand, seek to preserve the future of Eorzea as a whole. Similar, yet not quite the same. Now then, I expect that you will be field more often in the future. As such, I will have you carry this Link Pearl with you at all times. It will allow us to stay in touch regardless of location. Your Zia is changing, Sudden, and you have the power to help shape it anew. None can say what the morrow will bring, but so long as we believe in ourselves, there is not we cannot achieve. Now, it is time you made ready for your journey. Before you depart, be sure to speak to Tataru. She will apprise you as to where and when the Remembrance services are due to take place. Okay, alright. Uh, up to Tataru then, and find out wh wh where to go first. Oh boy. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you can change which company you've joined, should you not be happy. But I may quickly do uh, some research or something before I choose. We'll see how the episode plays out. We'll see. Hey, Tataru. I am... Um, I'm sorry about all the attention you're getting, Sudden. I might have sung your praises a little too loudly, and often to a few too many people. <laughs> uh, next time, I'll be sure to hold my tongue. Literally, if necessary. Anyway, I expect you want to know where and when the Remembrance Services are taking place. If all goes to plan, Gridania's Grand Company, the Order of the Twin Adder, will hold the first of the three services. An Elder Seeds here, Kane Sena, will deliver her address at Miketo's Amphitheater. It, I should probably mention at this point that due to the organizational challenges involved in assembling all the involved parties, it's possible that the order of the services might change. Still, there's not much we can do about that, so make Ritania your first port of call. Next, you'll need to go to Ulda, where Flame General Raban Aldin will be addressing the masses at the Royal Promenade. Oh, and it's rumored that there's to be a special guest. How exciting! Last but not least, you must make your way to the State Room in Limda Laminza, where Maelstrom Chief Admiral Merlip Blufferswin will be given her address. The room is accessible via the Admiral's Lift. Identify yourself to the sentry, Xanthael, and he will admit you. I got all that. Well, off you go then. I hope you find the Remembrance Services suitably educational. I suggest visiting the city states in my prescribed order, though with your record of impeccable timing and luck, the schedule may well change in favor of your preferred travel plans. A farewell. Okay, so I guess first up is Gridania. And I believe we can just return. Yes, Gridania, there we go. We made it to Gridania. It's raining again. I really need, need, need an umbrella. But <laughs> anyways... We... I, I was... I thought of something. I believe these companies have... I, hang on, let me check on that. Uh, yeah, Old Gridania and then the Amphitheater right over here. But if I'm not mistaken... Adder's Nest. Yeah, they have like... Specific gear that they can sell you. So what I think I'm going to do is check that out. And honestly just see what gear is... Um, most impressive, I suppose? So let me quickly check that out for these serpents here. Okay, they have some pretty neat gear, not gonna lie. I like that artisan's jacket, it was really nice. But I think I'm gonna do that for the other two companies as well, and just, you know, see... Um, see, see who has the better looking gear. <laughs> I mean, fashion is the end game here, right? Amphitheater. Now let's head in. Ah. 
I lost my son to the Calamity. The three Seed Seers are all together. Some say you couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Oh, this lighting is horrible. Our forebears were once strangers in the Twelve's Wood. Fearful of the green wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Gradania was born some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hure and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. Do you see the Gridanian standard? There, hanging behind the Elder Seed Seer. Aren't these... Yeah, these are the two that were on the cart with me. The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizan. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? Quiet, actually. In accordance with the will of the elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors have not always sought the same for themselves, nor for us. Though we Gridanians have no love for war, we have still less for those who would threaten our way of life. Ever have we fought to protect the sanctity of the Twelve's Wood. Horns. That is special. When the Garlean Empire brought its war of conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance, that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Five years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartano. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the Calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixul have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark Time was a man could the walk the high road Ixel. without fear. On this day, five years ago, Countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory.
And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? Um... Was she talking about those warriors at night? The calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder Standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity. We must think of the children! The woods will be done. It's up to us to protect the forest. All the elementals! Okay. Very emotionally filled speech. I like it. So, who are you two? If you'll permit me, Alfie, no. Ah, oh, pleasure. Sodden, even wind. And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. Mm -hmm. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. Uh huh. The Gridanians are unfortunate enough to have con to contend with two beast tribes. The Exal are unquestionably the more troublesome. Being of naturally warlike disposition, and want to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. The Sylphs, by contrast, are peaceful in nature, being mischievous rather than malevolent, and have long been on friendly terms with the Gridanians, until recently at least. But as they have grown aloof, a change observed at roughly the time they summoned the primal Ramu. The Gridanians have no love for war, and they consider open conflict the last resort. Though they clash with the Ixal ever more regularly, you may be assured that they do so in self-defense. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty, though one wonders how long it will be before it is broken. The Twelvewood was grievously wounded during the Calamity, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. The people are hopeful that restoring the wood, and thereby the power of the Elementals, will put an end to their woes. Yet, how long would that take? Centuries, I'd wager. Meanwhile, the Ixal will continue their incursions, spurred on by Garuda and her insatiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gridanians like it or not, sooner or later it will come to all-out war, and when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How valuable might the aid of a capable adventurer prove to them then? Well, perhaps you will find out. If the Elder Seatseer's words fell on fertile ground... Strange... Strange youth. They seem young, but speak... wisely. 
Why can I interact with this? <laughs> Use key item. Uh huh. Okay. All right. So the next one is either at Ulda or Limsa Liminsa. So we will be heading off to the airship landing and taking the airship. Well, let's just do them in order. So we're going to head to Ulda. Airship ticket to Ulda. Yes, please. Made it to Ulda, and I believe this is the one with the lift, right? Yes. I never know where to take the lift. Testing Strip Ruby Road. Uh, let's go Ruby Road. We'll see. <laughs> we just need an Aetherite Crystal, and then we can uh, bam on over. Oh, I need to find where the thingy is. The, um, whatchamacallit. Ooh, right. Okay. Let me quickly go and research that, look at the gear, and then we'll continue on. So, I'll see you when I've done that. Okay. Uh, these have some very cool gear. And some interesting pants. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Some very interesting pants. But yeah, I had, like, especially the uh, Flame Captain coat was impressive. It looked so good. Anyway, let's see where we need to go. I suppose it's near... Yes, the Chamber of Rule. Perfect. You know, with these Aethernet Crystals, it's actually once you start learning where to teleport, it makes it a lot easier <laughs> to travel around. Oh, here we go. Alright, let's... Let's head in. Behold, tis the Sultana Nanamo herself! And Roban as well! Hark you, souls of flame! Drawn to the bosom of the desert, where the fire burns brightest and shall rage forevermore. Hurrah! Brauban! Where since antiquity, under the sage and judicious rule of the Ur dynasty, we have wrought sand into gold. Where by the grace and glory of Naldar have our brave sons and daughters flourished and prospered. I speak of Uldar! 
There, at the Flame General's back, flies the Grand Company's standard. Hmm? Note the sigil. The golden scales of order balance the jewel of prosperity with the flame of might. Great and many are the gifts our nation has given the realm. In Eorzea's darkest hour, on the killing fields of Cartano, none spent more in blood and gold than we. Thus was the Seventh Imperial Legion laid low. Ah! So that's how it happened. How soon history forgets. <laughs> Yet many left our gates never to return. Let us pray for our absent brothers and sisters, that they might know happiness in the great beyond, as Thor's honored guests. If the fates were fair, the price we paid that day would have bought us victory. Alas, they are not. And now, but five years into this seventh umbral era, the spirit of sacrifice which granted us our strength is all but dead. Look around you. What do you see? A people divided, downtrodden, and enthralled. Where are the merciful alms of the rich? Where is the just steel of the righteous? I ask you, is this the great nation our brothers and sisters gave their lives to save? You who call this living, dishonor the name of the immortal flames. It is but a slow death. Our enemies surround us. The savage hordes of the Amalja wait beside our roads, strangling the lifelines of trade. Meanwhile, the Guardians make mock of our borders and despoil our land of its natural wealth. We stand on a precipice, yet we do not act. Whether trader or soldier, monetarist or royalist, all must recognize that a divided Uldar stands to fall. Victory and fortune walk hand in hand. Ye who seek His glory arms are will, massive, by the way. Not to what little you can snatch from your neighbor, but to the boundless wealth of the world beyond. Now is the time to unite. Now is the time to ride forth. In the name of the Sultana, I beseech you! Line not your own coffers, but those of the immortal flames! Seek not to prosper from Uldar, but to restore her to prosperity! As the realm prospers, so shall Uldar! As Uldar prospers, so shall her people! Ya for Uldar! Together we are one! Raban. <laughs> oh no. People of Ulda, I, Nanimo, 17th in the line of all, address you. Much has been made of the wealth of Ulda. Yet those who measured that wealth in coins and carrots are gravely deceived. For the true wealth of Uldar lies in the health, happiness, and hopes of her people. Beloved subjects, I bid you raise aloft the torch of Uldar, that her flames might serve as a beacon for all Eorzea to see. Long live Nanamo! Glory to the Sultana! Victory and fortune, stride fearless into the inferno, for we are... By fire reborn! I mean, she may be little, but that is still a weight on his arm. That man is powerful. Forsooth, the time is now! I believe, I believe. meeting you again. I mean, I was invited to one of these talks. The Uldans have a long history of conflict with the Amalja, the beast tribe that worships the primal Ifrit. Judging by your look of distaste, I take it you have encountered them. Uh, not just the Amalja. The Uldans do not shy from confrontation, 
If art threatens their precious prosperity, they will seek to crush it. So have they dealt with Ifrit thus far, smothering his flames each time he is stoked to life. Yet he is but one of several problems. They have been quiet these past five years. The Garleans have not gone away. Meanwhile, refugees come to arrive in droves, and Ulda has no clear policy on how to deal with them. After all, not even the Sultanat's coffers are bottomless, and even assuming they had the coin, resources will ever be finite. Which brings me back to the subject of Ifrit. It has been observed that the Yamalja are summoning him with ever-increasing frequency. Every time they do so, the Uldan send their forces to smite the Primal, and though they invariably succeed, each victory is bought with blood. It is a war of attrition which they cannot well sustain. Small wonder, then, that the Immortal Flames are eager to recruit more members. At such a desperate hour, an adventurer of your experience would be most welcome addition to their ranks. That sister doesn't say a lot, does she? Alright, the final one. We are headed towards Limza Liminza. This episode may run a little bit long now, but I, I think it's a bit silly to end now. <laughs> right before the final one, right? Oh boy, I don't have the... Um... Hmm. Okay. Um... Oh, bugger. Right, I need to find my way. Is, is there a lift? I see a lift. Aha! Lodomaya. There's a blending, perfect. Wasn't even that far. Alright, final one. Limsa Lominsa. And one more vendor to research, so let me go ahead and do that first, and I'll meet you when I've done that. Oh, I really love that captain's jacket. That looks so good. Yeah, I have no idea which company to join. <laughs> Anyways, let me head on over to... Um, let me make my way over to the quest area here. Which is the state room in Limsa Liminza. Oh yeah, right, we needed to talk to... La... La... Not you. Not you, but I do need to go to the Bulwark Hall, I think. I think it's another lift, right? Yes, Zanthayal, that was it. That, that was the name I was looking for. Zanthayal. Yes, please. Right. Final Remembrance Service. The Garleans are another matter altogether. So much for our alliance. It's sunk beyond the seabed. Brothers and sisters of the sea, hearken unto me. Look upon this, our mighty crimson standard, and tell me your hearts do not swell with pride. Seven hundred summers have come and gone since our forefathers first ran aground in this fertile bay. In that time, guided by the mother of oceans, Limsa Lominsa has grown from humble fishing village to uncontested ruler of the five seas and beyond. Did you look as the Admiral bid you? It is a rather stirring standard, I must say. The crimson field is meant to signify the blood of fallen crewmates, while the black longship represents a pirate vessel. 
That is... Um... Okay. I can respect that, I suppose. When the Garlean Empire marched upon Eorzea, we assembled beneath the Maelstrom Standard, and our grand company was reborn. All answered the call, from the Knights of the Barracuda to Hilfir's bloody executioners. And together, we met our would-be conquerors upon the field of Cartano. That day, the world bore witness to the united strength of Limsa Lominsa. I swear to you, no army ever fought harder or with more courage. Yet many of ours did not survive. Join me now in remembering those who fought in the name of freedom and fell. May their souls be returned to the sea. Freedom. Yes, they have always been rather fond of their freedom. I also like how some of them seem to slap their face instead of just Much saluting. Much the beast tribes have. A small wonder. Beneath the surface, one would struggle to tell them apart. Oh, snap, kid. It has been five long years since the calamity struck. Five long years of tireless rebuilding. Yet still the wounds of the calamity fester and weep. But when I stand atop the mizzenmast and gaze out upon our battered and broken vessel, I see an undying spirit. Did we not build all this from the wreck of the Galadian all those centuries ago? Shall we not do so again? Yet there are those who would see this ship of ours sink beneath the waves of the restless Rotano. The Sahagin creep ashore, seeking blood for their accursed god. Those fish -buck the bastards. Have risen? While the mines of Ogomoro spew forth kobolds who push ever south, despoiling our lands as they go. These savage beast tribes will be the first waves to crash against our creaking hull. And behind them swells the grim tide of the Garlean Empire. Even now the Kurs fly their flags within our borders. Doubt not, but that they will be upon us ere long. We are well nigh surrounded, yet there are those among us who would rather turn their swords against their crewmates than our cannons against our foes. How can we hope to repel our many enemies when mutiny breeds below deck? There is but one course left to us. One bearing that will bring us victory over the beast hordes and the Empire both, and see this ship safe to port. We must mend the rift the Calamity has reopened twixt Pirate and Maelstrom, and stand fast with our adventurer brothers against the coming Tempest. Mark ye well, a crew without unity is no crew at all. Tis but a mass of drowned men. To me, then, brothers and sisters of the sea, gather beneath the undying crimson standard and pledge me your strength, your skill, your wisdom. And with the guidance of the navigator, this great vessel of ours shall ride the waves till sea swallows all. Long live the Admiral! I'll follow ye to the seven hells, Admiral! Isn't it? I like it. I've always had a thing for the sea as well. Fancy meeting you again. Mm-hmm. I mean, you kind of knew I was going to be here, kid. As the Admiral mentioned in her address, Limsa Laminza is plagued by two beast tribes. The first are the fish like Sahagin, worshippers of the primal Leviathan. The second are the kobolds, who dwell beneath the earth and take the primal titan for their god. 
As if the Beast Drive's presence weren't troublesome enough, the Garleans have also chosen to erect the fortress right in the Leminsen's backyard. And that is to say not of internal strife. As a nation of pirates, there is no end to the blood feuds between the various factions, and while they fight amongst themselves, the Garleans wet their blades and watch. If the Lominsons are to have any hope of withstanding the Empire, they must first resolve their own affairs. Differences must be set aside and the primal threat dealt with once and for all. To this end, I expect that I will soon take decisive action against the Beast Tribes. Mark my words, the Maelstrom Standard will be drenched the deeper shade of crimson ere long. That a capable adventurer like you would be a valuable addition to their crew is beyond question. Oh boy, so they could all do with my help. I have no idea. I have no idea on whom to help. Soren, this is Minfilia. You are well, I hope. Would I be correct in thinking that the final remembrance service is now concluded? A moment ago, you say? What a coincidence. Uh, jesting aside, I trust you remember our guests from the Grand Companies? Well, delighted though we are to have them here at Awakening Sands, it would not do to keep them in suspense any longer than necessary. In short, hurry back. Oh boy, I need to make a decision. Right. Which company to join? That is going to be a question for next episode, because this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, then don't forget to boop that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, my friends. And bye-bye.